When one first starts learning about digital networks, one of the first topics presented is the network reference model called the OSI model. In this model, concepts such as encapsulation and protocol data units can quickly overwhelm anyone starting out. This tutorial presents a simplified four-layer communication model that has most of the elements of the OSI model, but in terms that are more familiar. Hopefully, this will lay a good foundation for further study. Let's suppose Dave, who lives in Yarmouth, wants to send a communication to Jane, who lives in Ottawa. They're separated by quite a bit of distance, about 1,300 kilometers. And at this time, no mechanism uh, exists to send this communication. So we're going to have to invent one. Computer networks also don't exist at this time, so we're going to have to come up with a purely mechanical solution. This is quite a, a complex problem, and like all good problem solvers, we're going to break this down into smaller, sort of bite-sized chunks. As we go through, we're going to call these chunks layers, and the uh, reason for this will be obvious as we, as we go through this process. Let's start our design. We first need some way to communicate with Jane, so we'll use the technology of writing a letter. So we take some paper, a pen, and begin. Now the rules of writing involve selecting a language that Jane understands and using proper grammar so that uh, within that language we can be understood. And these rules form what is called the protocol for this layer. We're going to call this the writing protocol. So we'll just WP and it operates at our letter layer in our newly evolving model. Now I'm going to introduce a term called information unit. And the information unit uh, refers to the form that the information is taking at this layer. So we actually transformed Dave's thoughts into something that we can put down uh, on a piece of paper. So the information unit at this layer is the letter. Let's look at our next layer or our next chunk in our model. We need to get the letter to Ottawa somehow, so we need to put some type of address on it so it can get delivered. So we're going to invent this person called the letter carrier who's going to help us do this. Now, the protocol at uh, this level is going to be called the letter carrier protocol. And what's the letter carrier protocol going to do for us? Well. Um, Dave's going to give the letter to the letter carrier and the letter carrier is going to address the letter in a consistent way. So all uh, letters from all people are going to get addressed in a consistent way. Street address and a city. You can put a country on there as well. Um, the letter carrier is actually going to do two things. The letter carrier is going to accept the letter and put it in an envelope with a destination and a source address in here. So my um, source address is here. We call it a return address. The destination address is here. Now on the other end, we're going to have a letter carrier as well. So if a letter carrier received a letter, the letter carrier would also deliver it within their local area. So this is the task of the letter carrier protocol. The information in this layer, which we'll call the letter carrier layer, is the envelope. Now 
Now, note that the protocol at this level is very much different than the protocol at the top le uh, level because we're doing different tasks. Now, the process of putting the letter inside an envelope actually has a name. It's called encapsulation. And at each layer, layers sort of do two main things to information. They can either reformat the information or they're going to encapsulate it. Reforming, reformatting the information is what's done at our top layer here. We had uh, some information that was in our head and we wanted to change that to a format where it's down on paper. We can now actually, because it's a, a thing, we can actually deliver it. At layer two, we're going to use the encapsulation of uh, this next lower la uh, layer so that uh, the letter can actually start to uh, get delivered. We now propose that we create an organization called a post office. And so this layer will be called the post office layer. And it's going to implement the post office protocol. Now, what's the post office protocol going to do? Well, at this layer, the post office is going to take all the envelopes uh, that are going to Ottawa and put them in one mail bag so that they can get delivered. Envelopes that go to Calgary will go in a different mail, uh, mail bag. On the receiving end, uh, once uh, we're, we're going to do the reverse operation as well. We'll take mail bags uh, that come from, say, Yarmouth. We're going to open them up and we're going to deliver them to various letter carriers depending on where these uh, envelopes say that the letter has to be delivered. The information unit uh, is actually the mailbag here because the mailbag is encapsulating all the envelopes. So we also have encapsulation on the information at this level. Finally, we need some way to get the uh, mailbags actually delivered to destination towns. We're going to call this the vehicle layer. We're going to purchase some trucks. They're going to contain mail bags and they're going to deliver them to the various towns. Again, what we see here is encapsulation. The mail bags are going to be encapsulated inside uh, the mail trucks. Our information uh, unit here is the truck. And we're going the protocol we're going to use here, the rules of actually delivering, we're going to call it a driving protocol. Because to get the information to the other side, we basically need to adhere to the rules of the road. And uh, over here, our rules of a road is we drive in the right hand side. Uh, we go less than 100 kilometers per hour. We have to obey all the traffic signs and so on. So this is all part of the driving protocol. The bottom layer in a communication model also interfaces with what's called the medium. This is what's going to carry the actual information. Here it's a highway. In an actual data network, we have copper cables we could have a wireless, so we actually have the air as the medium. And increasingly in cities, we start to have light in the form of fiber optic. So these are all different type of media that can carry signals. So our information is moving down through the layers here. And at each layer, a different protocol is acting on the information. The collection 
of all the different protocol rules is called the protocol stack. And you'll see this term referred to uh, a lot uh, when you deal with data networks. Now, one of the main benefits of using a layered model is that we can enhance um, the performance of our communication model by improving on any one layer without affecting the layers above or below it. Let's give an example. Suppose airplanes have just been invented. We want to uh, um, offer one day delivery. We can change the function of the bottom layer. So let's suppose we change this to a layer. It's still our vehicle layer. Our information unit now is the airplane. Um, we're going to use maybe a flying protocol. Um, we have to adhere to all the rules of, uh, of these new airports which have been built. And, but by just simply changing this one layer, we've improved our communication model, but we haven't had to change any of the functions or any of the protocols of the rules of the layers above it. Now let's look at the entire communication process. So Dave had some communication that he wanted to send to Jane. So at the top layer, and these layers are numbered from the bottom up, so we'll call this one, two, three, and four. So at layer four, Dave used the application of writing a letter. And in the OSI model, this would be called the application layer. It's where the user uh, interfaces with the system. This then is encapsulated at what we call the letter carrier uh, layer, which added addressing information. In the OSI model, addressing is handled by the network layer. That was then encapsulated by uh, the post office mailbags. And in an OSI model, that's sort of similar to what we call a data link layer, which also has some addressing information in it. Finally, that has to get delivered, physically delivered, over some type of medium. And this is the responsibility in the OSI model of the physical layer. Now, the OSI layer has seven layers, so we haven't discussed all the possibilities, but we've made an analogy between our system and the generalized OSI model. So our letter gets put into an envelope or encapsulated into a mailbag, into a truck, and it travels over a medium. And finally, it ends up in Ottawa. Now the reverse of encapsulation happens. So we remove the mail bags from the mail truck and they go to the post office. The post office then removes the encapsulation of the mail bag, gets the individual envelopes, and those are presented to the layer above it, to the letter carriers. They're distributed depending on where locally those envelopes should be delivered. The letter carrier, in our model here, is actually then going to deliver that to the proper house. It's going to remove the letter from the envelope here, and it's going to present that letter to Jane. Jane is then going to use the protocol of writing, because Jane speaks the same language and grammar, and is going to be able to understand the thoughts uh, in that letter. So the same process happens in data communication, this transforming of information, the encapsulation, and the removing of capsulation in the delivery uh, of the information. Although we've used the term information unit, that's not the actual term which is used in the OSI model. It's called the protocol data unit.
or PDU. And in the OSI model, you'll start to hear terms like um, frame, packet, and segment. And as you study that model, you'll see where they appear. In a layered communication model, these horizontal corresponding layers also form a virtual communication path. And as far as the participants of these layers go, it's as if um, all this other stuff underneath of it's magic and it's just communicating directly across. So Dave's creating a letter. If Dave could beam himself directly to Ottawa, he would simply hand that to Jane who could then understand it. The letter carrier here deals with envelopes. If this letter carrier could hand that envelope to a letter carrier in Ottawa, it would immediately get locally delivered to Jane. So it's as if there's a, commu a virtual communication path between these corresponding layers. The International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, created the Open Systems Interconnection Project uh, and the OSI model. The purpose was to create a reference model for any type of data communication. And by reference model, we mean that it's going to form the basis uh, of any communication model that you want to create. However, it's designed to be modified depending on the needs of the system. Now in the internet, we use a, a modified model of this, and it's called the TCP model. And it has four layers. But those layers incorporate more than one. Uh, some of those layers incorporate more than one layer of the OSI model. So all the functions uh, are the same. Studying the OSI model makes all other network models easier to understand. 